Hey everyone, this is Daniel and in today's video we're going to take a look at Microsoft Forms Actions in Power Automate Desktop Flow. Now this feature was released around mid-September but what it does is opens up a wide range of options because if you think about it you can now have anonymous users fill a Microsoft Form on the internet take that data and put it on a legacy desktop application. So it definitely unlocks a whole bunch of ideas that you might already have. So stick around, this is very important. But first, here's my intro video. So this feature came out around September of 2023 and the build number was 2309. And as you can see in the website, one of the new features was Microsoft Forms. Another important thing to note is that in this version of 2.36, uh, if you go take a look at actually all the desktop versions, the 2.36 starts at the 2000. 309, which is around September 27. So basically, if you've got anything new right now, if you actually gone and even done you know, an upgrade like now, uh, you should be in good shape. And I'll show you exactly where to go and find. So I thought I'd at least start by this way. All right, now let's go take a look at the action. So I'm in the Power Automate desktop. Oh, and by the way, on the top right, do you see, hey, Copilot is now in the Power Automate for desktop, uh, but I'm not gonna talk over here. I'm gonna do a whole separate video on that. So make sure you watch that one. Anyway, now I'm gonna go ahead and create a desktop. And in my desktop, I'm gonna go and give it a flow name. I'll click on create. And as the new pop-up will come up, that's a whole separate window that comes in for the new desktop flow that we're gonna build after it goes and gets things ready. If I just go and do a search over here for Microsoft Forms, just do a search for Microsoft Forms, right over here, you see that there is one action. It is get response details. Now it's important that you plan how to build this because if you just go and drag and drop this action, it actually doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You need to have this whole mindset of getting a cloud flow to go ahead and do the triggering and then go and send, get the information on the Microsoft Forms and send it to your desktop one. That's basically the best way of how this all works. But, but before we go into that, at least I wanna show you what this action looks like. So I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna drop it over here, and now it goes ahead and has this pop-up window. And the first thing that it's asking for is the form ID. So if I click on the form ID, it actually goes ahead and gives me all the list of Microsoft Forms directly by the names that I have available. And this is pretty neat. Now, before you go and do this, it is also important that whatever is the environment that you've selected, that environment will automatically have a Microsoft Forms connection reference. Connection references are how all the connections are made, specifically in the Power Automate to desktop. And if you're not familiar about connection reference, I actually released a video on that topic. I'm gonna to go put that in the link below. Go take a look at that. It kind of helps you understand what is a connector, the connections, and the connection references. It's really important that you understand that uh, when you start working on it. All right, but I'm just saying that to you because if you don't already have a connection reference for Microsoft Form, another pop-up window will come up to go and make sure your connection reference is created. Before that connection reference is created, you will need to have a connection with the Microsoft Form. So there is some back-end pre uh, prerequisites that is required for this to work. It's all simple and easy, but just make sure that you have the connection reference done, all right? After all that is done in my case, uh, when I go in and I'll click on the drop down, I see that I have a whole bunch of forms over here. And these are basically searchable. So right there, there is a search bar. Uh, I actually have one called new client request form. That's the one that I want. If I go and click on it, voila, this is shown over here. Now what it does is goes ahead and does a response ID. That is where things get a little confusing because the whole process of Microsoft Forms action here in the Power Automate for desktop is a secondary thing. Secondary thing means your flow needs to start on the cloud side, the cloud gets all the information and then goes ahead and puts it into your desktop action. That is the best way to leverage this Microsoft Forms. So don't start over here and then try to figure out, okay, what is happening? I don't have any variables over here. Like, what is this information? I don't get it. Don't start over here. Go ahead and start on the cloud first and then call this desktop flow. So now that you understand this thing, I'm gonna actually show you and walk you through the process. And then in the end, I have a full end-to-end -end example and that will really show you the power of Microsoft Forms action in Power Automate for desktop. So let's switch over to the cloud flow. So I'm in the Power Automate cloud, uh, making sure that I'm in the exact same environment that I need to be. 
And over here, I'm going to go and click on plus new flow. Now, this is going to be an automated cloud flow. So when I go and click on the automated, the first one that you want actually is the when new response is submitted in Microsoft Forms. I was doing a few demo over here. That is why you see that as the first option. In your case, if you don't do that, uh, you can either go and click on skip or right over here and search for triggers. Go and type in Microsoft Forms and you will find it. Uh, since I already see it, I'm going to go and select it. I'll go and click on create a new. It directly opens up into the modern Power Automate Studio. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to switch back over into the classic for now. Uh, just, just to make sure that we focus on what's important. Uh, and then I'll go and give this a name. So there you go. That's my demo. And here I go ahead and now put in the form. Well, before I put the form over here, let's go take a look at that form really fast. So I'm going to my form and the one that I want to look at is the new client request form. What this is, is the front end anonymous access type of a place where a person who's coming in and say, hey, I want to leverage your company for whatever tasks. Uh, and so I need to fill out a new client form. Again, this is happening anonymously on your company website or whatever with an internet access. And Microsoft Forms is an amazing tool just to get that done. And over here, three simple things are done. Company name, what is the user's full name and an email address? That's what it is. So this is the, now the new client form or new client request form. So I come back out directly into a Power Automate flow. Uh, and over here, I search for the new client request form. Once I get that, I go ahead and now make sure that I've got the form over here. Great. I'm going to put in another action. That action again is for the uh, Microsoft Forms. It'll go ahead and submit that. Next, I go and get this action called get response details. Get response details immediately goes and says, which is my form ID? The form ID comes from the new client request form, which is right over here. And then this response ID that comes from the previous trigger. And so therefore I have to put that trigger over here, got the response ID and we are in good shape over here. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and send this form information to the Power Automate desktop. And so if I click on the plus new setup, um, I go and do a quick search for Power Automate desktop. And there you go. That's the one that I want. It's an action. Uh, I can just click on desktop flows. And then that's the one action, the only action there. So when I go and click on it, and the one that I want to select is which one is the desktop flow and then what is the run mode. So I'm going to pause over here because it's important that you understand that these steps need to be done on the cloud flow. And then after this, go ahead and actually create that desktop flow. And in the desktop flow, I'll actually show you the key steps that you want to run over there. So now let's pause on this side. Let's go to our desktop flow and then we'll come back over here and finish off this part. So in order to build the desktop flow, there's some important information that we need directly from this Microsoft form. First of all, how many of these questions whose answers we need to send it to the desktop flow? And in this case, there is three of them. There is the company name, full name and email address. But there's also that one additional thing. And if you figure that out, it is the ID of this form. So we'll be sending that as well. So the trick to do that is actually go and create a variable for each and every one of them. And you want to go and create the variable in your desktop flow such that when the cloud flow connects to the desktop flow, that connection of the four variables are immediately built. Then immediately on the cloud side, you know that, oh, the desktop flow actually needs more of those four variables. Let me send those four variable data information. That's the important thing. So let's actually go to the desktop flow and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go to my desktop flow. I'm going to click on the plus new. I'll go and give this a name. I'm going to call that a Power Automate Desktop with Microsoft Forms demo. Um, I'll click on create. Another window will open up. It will take us directly into the desktop flow designer. Uh, and then one of the first things I want to do is I'm going to close this copilot uh, is actually start creating some variables. So on the right, hover over there, which looks like an X in the curly brackets, click on it and the variables opens up. And over here in the input and output variables, start creating those variables. So remember, we actually not have three questions and we have the additional one for the form ID. So I'm going to click on the side. I'm going to click on input. And now on this new input variable, it's important that you fill in the variable name and the external name. And you can do that a little separately. So what, here's what I mean. Um, in the input name, I'm going to call that as var form ID. But in the actual external name over here, you can just call that as form ID. And it'll start to make sense. But you know, the var and all of that, the variable, the naming convention, apply that to the actual variable name. But the external name, you can give it as a natural language type of an external name so that every day person can understand that. So here's one, okay, the form ID. Now, well, there were three other things that we needed. Let's go take a look what those were. There was the company name, full name, and email address. So we need to add the variables for each of these as well. So let's go back into our desktop flow 
and let's go and create the variables for that. So I'm gonna click on the input, and over here, there is the company name. So I'm gonna call this as the var company name. All right, I'm gonna call that as company name. Uh, but I'll just go and copy the source, it makes it a little easier. And then in the external name, go ahead and type in company name. It's very, very important that you do not forget to put in these external names. Otherwise, in the flow, on the cloud flow, all you will get are these three different names over there. You won't understand which one is which. So don't forget to put in the external name. All right, so we've got the company name. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and get the full name. So I'm gonna go ahead and put another input one. Uh, this one is going to be var full name. Again, go ahead and copy this over. Come over here to my external name and I'll go ahead and paste that in. And in the external name is going to be the full space name. Click on save. And then the last one was email address. So again, on the variable name, put in var email. And then on the external name, remove this new input and just type in email. Very, very important that you do this, all right? Click on it, make sure that you save it. So all of this is happening over here, all right? Great. Now, at least let me go ahead and show you the next steps that you have is actually start leveraging the Microsoft Form action. So on the top right on the search, I'm gonna start typing in Microsoft Form. There is only one action, which is the get response details. Grab it, drag it and drop it over here, pretty neat. Now on the form ID, we need to actually go and put in that form name. So go and get your form name. Mine is the new client request form. Go back into our desktop flow and there you go. In fact, you click on the drop down first because there's a separate search. The search doesn't work up there. The search works over here. So I'm gonna say new client request form. Go and grab that one. But in the response ID, this is where you go and put in our variable, which is the form ID. That's what it is. And I should have named that as form response ID, so at least it starts to make sense. But you get the idea that the form ID is the variable I assign over here, because that's the information that is gonna be pulled in from the form. So just for the demo's sake, I'm actually gonna save this over here because you'll actually see a very important step that is happening. Um, in fact, for just sake of example, uh, let me go and drop a full message over here. All right, so I'm gonna say a message, and in the messages, I'll put a display message, and in the display message, I'll actually go and say uh, Microsoft Forms, and over here, I'm gonna start displaying the information. So the first thing that I'm gonna display is directly the form ID, so I'll select that one, Next, I'll go and start putting in the other information as well. Well, one of them was the full company name. So let's go grab that one. Um, go ahead and again into the section, go and put in the full name. And then finally, even the email address. So I'll put that in over here so you can actually get all of it right over here, right? So I'll go and click on save. That way the pop-up message will come up. We'll be able to see that. Cool. So I'm going to click on save. And again, in this time, you don't want to run it over here because it's not going to run. You want to run this from the cloud side. So let's go and add this desktop flow to that cloud flow. Because remember, we need to still finish that. So I'll go back into my cloud flow over here. Uh, if this thing doesn't fill up, that's fine. You can always go ahead and just delete this off. Um, that way it'll just delete the step. Make sure that you save it. You don't lose any of your work. This is where we left off the last time. Um, it's saving. And then now I'll go and click on the new desktop one. Uh, it should already remember which one we did over here. <clears throat> Open one. There's the desktop flow that we already selected. There's the action. And now I should be able to find the flow that I just created. And there you go, right on the top, which is Power Automate Desktop with Microsoft Forms demo. That's the one that we just created over here. See, that's the one. So we got that. So I'm going to click on this one. And then my run mode for the sake of this example over there, I'm going to go and say that uh, attended when you're signing in. Leave that. But notice the moment I went and selected the flow, it went and gave us these three input variables. And do you see that it actually went and gave us the correct name, the form ID, the company name. So it's very important that you actually start doing that variables correctly. Because over here, when I double click on one of them, this variable name makes sense when you're in the desktop flow. But the external name is what helps when you're calling that from the cloud flow. So kind of get used to that and think about that in advance to plan and make the overall process a lot more easier, especially in the future when you come back and do some troubleshooting. Okay, form ID. Well, what's the form ID? That form ID is the response ID right over here when a new response is submitted. So I'm gonna select that response ID. What is the company name? Well, the company name is part of the form. See the company name, full name, email address. That's what we're seeing over here. So for the company name, I'm gonna select the company name. Full name, I'm gonna select the full name. And then the email address, I'm gonna basically select this email address. So we are gonna take all this information from Microsoft for all in the cloud flow, and I'm gonna send it now into the desktop flow. So I'll click on save over here. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna pretend like I'm filling out the form that should trigger the cloud flow. And in this final step, it will also trigger out the desktop flow. So let's actually go and see how that all works, all right? So at least let me go fill up this form. I'm gonna do a preview. 
For the company name, I'm actually going to go and say Puppy Power Incorporated. Uh, full name, it is uh, Finn Christian. Well, you know Finn is actually my dog. And for the email address, I'm just going to say Finn Christian at uh, ppinc.org. I'll go and click on Submit, which means the form has been submitted which means the next thing that's going to happen is this flow will trigger any second. Therefore, it's already going and triggering. It's actually running. And I'm going to keep my hands up over here because any second now you will see a desktop flow run and a pop-up message will come up. So let's wait for that. There you go. The desktop flow is running and I can see that another tab opened up and is blinking. So if I actually go over here, you can see that now there is this pop-up window. So it gave me five, which is the form ID. Went and gave me the company name, gave me the full name, and it also went and gave me the email address. Remember, these were the four things from the cloud that we pushed it over to the desktop. So I'll go and click on OK. And the other good place to verify that your Cloudflow ran is going to the My Flows, the Cloud Flows, and over here, this is the one that we just ran. So if you can see now, even the desktop flow ran successfully. We saw the Cloudflow ran, but here's the desktop flow also that ran successfully with the connection reference of Microsoft Forms. So now that you understand how to leverage this Microsoft Forms action in your Power Automate for desktop flow, what I want to show you is a full end-to-end -end example. Now, before I go and do the demo, I gotta actually go and make sure I do some cleanup. So this is the demo that we just created. I'm gonna go and delete that. So I'll just go and click on yes. It is deleting it. And then the other thing that I wanna do is go to our cloud flows also, which is back, which is my flows cloud. Uh, this is the one that I'm going to go ahead and delete. So let me go and click on that. Uh, click on the ellipsis. I'll go and click on delete right there. And then the full demo that I have, I need to go ahead and now turn that on. So let me click on it and go and say turn on. All right, so that way I actually have everything set up. This is now the full end-to-end -end demo that I'm gonna do. And just to give you an overview of what my full end-to-end -end example is, um, I have the Cloudflow and the on-premises desktop flow. Somebody is gonna go and fill up a Microsoft form. That Microsoft form is gonna trigger the Cloud Power Automate flow. That sends the information directly to my desktop Power Automate flow, and the desktop Power Automate flow will automatically go ahead and actually put the information into a legacy desktop application that I have, full end to end example. So let's go and now fill out that Microsoft Forms. So here I'm in my Microsoft Form, I'm gonna click on the preview. So company name, I'm gonna go and put in my company, Christian Family Consulting Service Incorporated. Uh, full name, that's me, Daniel Christian and I'll go and put in my email address so everything is good. Go and click on submit and the form is filled out. So I'm gonna now go ahead and keep my hands up over here because the next thing that's gonna happen is the Cloudflow. And we were almost so close to building the Cloudflow. Same thing, triggers the form and it sends the information from the form to my desktop flow. My desktop flow is a little bit more advanced uh, but I've got so many other videos doing that. So that flow is currently running and there you go. You see that? Took the information, went to my accounts in my accounts, a new entry is put in. These are the three fields that we put in. By the way, my hands are still up away. It's still running, saves it, and then goes in and runs it. Did you see that? That is pretty awesome. And let me just show you those two flows quickly. Um, I'll come over here to my cloud flow first. Uh, in the cloud flow, this is the one that we went and actually looked at right over here on the edit side. Uh, very similar to what we already just created first, right? The form was submitted, form details came in, and then these were the actual four things we send it as variables to the desktop flow. So we actually built this, this is exactly the same thing. Uh, the only difference is in my desktop flow is when I go and click on the edit, I've got some additional actions over here that actually goes ahead and opens up that legacy application. So now that we're in the desktop flow studio, you see the first thing is that get response details. But on the top right, you will see that I also have those four variables that I created as input variables. After that, these are all the steps that I went on and created to go and open up that legacy application and then go ahead and actually populate those things, click on the save button and then go and close it. And this is how the desktop flow ran. So wasn't that awesome? You can now go ahead and fill out an anonymous form on the cloud built using Microsoft Forms, take that data and enter it into a legacy desktop application using Power Automate for desktop. And remember, this could not be done before, but now that you have that Microsoft Forms action in your Power Automate for desktop, you can go ahead and do that as well. Just make sure that your Power Automate for desktop version is updated enough to see that Microsoft Forms action. Hopefully this video got you excited. Hopefully your wheels are turning. So now you can also go ahead and build such solutions. And as always, keep using Power Automate Desktop. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, 
go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.